John, I would like to live forever like everyone else. Uh, and all of the, the schemes that I see around certainly have a, a lot of uncertainty with them. Uh, you, you have some ideas how I may live forever, so uh, you, ha you have my attention. Okay. Well, first, if you believe that um, a God who wants to produce good things is running the universe, or that in some way goodness is behind the existence of the universe, I think you are probably committed to the view that minds are immortal. Because what a rotten thing it would be to throw them all into the trash can just because the laws of physics said that lives would come to an end at a certain point. The views which I'm talking about are views which think that the laws of physics are themselves dependent on the uh, the will of God or the fact that value is operating through the laws of physics. And it could then be that um, at the point of our deaths, the laws which were going to control our futures would simply change. I see no problem in this sort of thing. There are, though, ways which could lead you to believe in immortality, which don't involve believing in God or believing in values behind the universe. And um, one of them comes from quantum physics. Quantum physics seems to tell us that all the events of the universe are connected with one another in such a way that they couldn't exist in isolation. And this means that after we're dead, the thing which um, continues to in existence, uh, carrying the patterns of other lives, will be what has carried the pattern of our life. Well, that just seems like uh, you live through your children or you, you're alive because somebody has my photograph. Well, no. It's more than this because the tr traditional view of uh, immortality is that involved something called the immortal soul, which had the characteristic of being a, a single unified existent, mm -hmm. all of whose parts were attractions. They couldn't exist in isolation. Now, what we have these days coming out of quantum physics is the view that the universe, or at least a large part of it, is a single existent, all of its parts are abstractions. And therefore, you and I are sort of abstractions from this underlying reality, which is going to continue onwards. The underlying reality will continue onwards, not bearing our personalities, but we will be benefiting from its continuance in precisely the way in which people were thought to benefit from the continuance of their mortal souls. Mm -hmm. The substance which underlies their existence will, will keep on going. John, the critical question in any sense of immortality is, do we maintain a personal sense of consciousness where I know I'm me, not melding into some universal pattern or cosmic consciousness or anything else? That's a crucial question for a lot of people, particularly in the West. In the East, you have much more acceptance of the fact that your pattern of consciousness is just um, a wave on the surface of reality mm. and that um, what matters is that the reality would be an experiencing reality and it doesn't particularly matter who it's being experienced by. Uh, even some philosophers in the West, for example, Derek Parfit, have come to the conclusion that if you're looking for a personal immortality, you haven't got it even inside your own lifetime in the sense that your personality is constantly changing. <laughs> and um, I, I can see the sense in this. I, in some ways, I, I'm simply not the same person as I was at age 12. For certainly that, that way, but I have a sense of, of a unity of myself, even though I'm a different person, have different beliefs and mm -hmm. different uh, uh, capabilities, but I certainly sense myself being the same person. And... Uh, you know, I don't have a lot of confidence, but I do have hope that that 
can continue. And uh, I'm not sure you're, you're you're helping my hope. Well, I might help your hope if I said, well, that continuance could uh, occur if there's a God running the universe. Uh, but uh, another way is to look at the situation as Einstein looked at it. When Einstein, his best friend Michele Besso, died off, he wrote a letter to the grieving relatives saying that in some way Besso's life had not been wiped out. Now, he expressed it badly. He said, time is an illusion. And what he would would say if he were a trained philosopher <laughs> is that many things we normally think about time are wrong. Uh, Einstein's view was that the universe really is four-dimensional. He said that it has a four-dimensional existence instead of being the development of a three-dimensional existence. He really thought that the past and the future exist. Not now, because now is just a slice through reality, but the past and the future are there. And this means that, in a sense, anybody who's had a life has got that life forever, because in Einstein's view, this four-dimensional block will continue being there. And in this block, we have Michelo Besso dead. But it's true that Michelo Besso is back there along the fourth dimension. Some people think of this as just wishful thinking. Bear in mind, it does have a nasty side to it. Uh, Joan of Arc is still being burned back there, for example. All the nasty things which have happened are in existence forever. But this is the Einsteinian view, and Einstein found it, on the whole, comforting. He thought that Michele Besso's life had been worth living, and that, in a sense, Michele Besso would forever live. And a large number of modern physicists agree with this Einsteinian view of the matter. Whether they draw any comfort from it might depend on whether they've <laughs> had... <laughs> pleasant, successful lives. Mm -hmm.